uh, comfortable conditions. Overseas, though, the investigation continues into the shooting down of a plane full of civilians, still making headlines this morning. Let's get more perspective now from Betsy Woodruff, politics writer with the Washington Examiner. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's get the latest, uh, first of all, on the investigation. What do we know at this point now on this Monday morning? The investigation thus far has really been a disaster. It's hard to use gentler terms to describe it. Australia's Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, said it looks more like a garden cleanup than like a forensic investigation. That's because the plane went down in eastern Ukraine, that the pro-Russian separatists have a lot of control over that area. And those separatists have been very hostile and belligerent to international investigators who are trying to look into the plane crash for more evidence. There's widespread international suspicion that the reason that the separatists have been so uncooperative is that they're trying to get rid of or destroy any evidence that could potentially incriminate them. In fact, uh, there was a report that one pro-Russian separatist actually fired warning shots over the head of some international investigators because he said they were looking at the wrong section of the crash site. It's hard to see how this could have gone worse. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Australia and the Prime Minister there also leading the charge with the United Nations trying to get more, just basically a break or to broker some kind of deal so that they can get in there and do a little bit more. But, you know, my goodness, when you're talking about getting into what's essentially a war zone to go in and deal with civilian casualties, it's tough. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. Uh, there's not an easy way to do this. Um, so a big thing to look forward to going through this week is if Vladimir Putin does much to pressure these pro-Russian separatists to be more cooperative with international investigators. That's a big question, because we heard John Kerry, of course, saying yesterday, and he was talking about you know the conditions like you just mentioned and how horrible that is. So from a political standpoint now, where does this go? The next big step is on the, on the European front. It's seeing what kind of new sanctions come out of the EU. According to a statement from British Prime Minister David Cameron's office, we can expect a new round of tougher sanctions on Russia. It remains to be seen what those sanctions will look like. If they'll only target specific individuals in Russia or if they'll actually target the Russian economy as a whole, which would be a big new step. And on the American front, Secretary of State John Kerry has said he's very supportive of a, of a wider and more, more tough round of sanctions. So we'll see what that looks like on our end. And he's also said the United States is planning to give more military aid to the Ukrainian government. We need to see what that aid looks like how much gets sent over, how much gets spent on it, and how Congress feels about that. Mm. You know, it's, it's tough with everything that's been happening these last few days, and Secretary Kerry leaving there now to go to Egypt to try to broker a peace deal in the Middle East. And then, of course, we have the issue that's still happening in Ukraine. On a bigger picture, is this more of a strain on U.S.-Russia relations, which has seemed to be a big, you know, target for the last couple of months before this crash even happened? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's, it's definitely been touchy for the last few months. And then yesterday on CNN Sunday show, Dianne Feinstein, who chairs the powerful Senate Intelligence Committee, said that U.S.-Russia relationships are at Cold War levels. Mm. Hard to imagine things being messier. As far as the, what we're looking at right here in the, in the crash site itself, and we heard you know, Secretary Kerry saying that these are basically like we're drunken people that were just dragging bodies and throwing them. What do we know about what they're actually doing with the victims of the crash at this point? We've definitely heard multiple reports that these separatists have been drinking a lot, been intoxicated, reeking of alcohol. At this point, the separatists seem to control most of the bodies. Not all the bodies have been recovered. Uh, there's a refrigerated train that has reports differ, but it sounds like upwards of 200 bodies on it. And investigators from the Netherlands have entered Ukraine, but they haven't had a chance to actually look at these bodies, which of course is devastating to the family members who have lost a loved one and then haven't even been able to have the appropriate funeral services. Well, not only that, and we heard too that they, you know, had gone through and basically were robbing the victims, taking pictures, uh, wallets, etc. And and not only separate but also international media. You know, British Britain's Sky News had to apologize for riffling through somebody's luggage on air. There's just been you know, all sorts of really terrible things happening. Mm. All right, it's a terrible situation. Um, as far as, you know, we mentioned the political aspects of this, anything else that we should look for in the next week possibly of development? Because we still don't really have anybody claiming responsibility for this either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anyone claims responsibility, that's going to be a really big deal. Thus far, it's just been a, a back and forth of casting blame. The United States and the EU seem to be operating under the assumption that the pro-Russian separatists are responsible and that they got the equipment, you know, the anti-air missile systems necessary to shoot the plane down from Russia so that so, so Putin would be partially responsible. But Putin and the separatists have charged that there's a anti-Russia, anti-separatist conspiracy uh, that the United States and the Ukraine have put together to try to make them look bad. So it's, it's back and so, forth. So who takes the lead in the investigation then? It remains to be seen. Uh, I mean, Putin's kind of the go-to guy here right. because he has the clout to actually get the separatists to cooperate. And if the separatists don't cooperate, then most of the evidence could be destroyed by the time any international investigators could get there. So yeah. it's all eyes on him right now. All right. The clock is ticking for sure. Thanks for joining us. Always good to talk to you. Appreciate you it. A lot more to come on that story, uh, no doubt. Right now it's 735, though. Let's head back over to Tucker and Allison and look at the forecast.
Thank you very much, Steve.